Nie, nie, nie powinnam, bo albo się odbywa x, y, 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 Good morning and welcome back to Wrocław. We're here in beautiful Poland. The sun is shining, there's nary a cloud in the sky and the Joint Juniors Ultimate Championship continues the first day of action for the majority of teams here. And we're getting our first look at the under 20 open division with the team from the Great White North, Canada, taking on the All Blacks of New Zealand. Benjamin Reese, delighted to be back in Wrocław and joined on comms by this game, for this game even, by Rahel Toshnerova. Hi Benji, what a lovely opportunity to sit with you in the commentary booth again. The weather, as you said, is absolutely lovely. The energy from the youths is unprecedented as the games are about to start for them for the first time at this tournament. So lots and lots of energy, lots and lots of smiles, excitement, anticipation from these teams getting ready for their first showing at this junior championship. We have the first stream game of the under 20 men's division. Very excited in about, um, about what it's going to bring us. I really hope we have some good spirits, some great highlights for the reels later on today. The wind is blowing. It is not, it is slightly different from what we experienced yesterday, I would say. There was a lot of swirling in front of the stands in the arena yesterday during the opening game. Today, I think it's gonna be more of a one-sided story. Currently, the wind is blowing from the right of your screen to the left. And here comes the first pull. So New Zealand in the black, pulling to Canada in the white. And we're underway. Canada initiating out of a side stack and wanting to send it deep early, uncorking the arm. De Bruyne is the target deep and he jumps it into the end zone. Cool as you like, Canada with an instant strike to take the lead, 1-0. The entire team comes in for the celebration for the Canadians. Now that was an easy peasy score for them. Yeah, clearly had a set play cut drawn up to start this game. Got the first pass off. They cleared the center of the field. Neo De Bruyne had plenty of time and he charged downfield. The disc, a little bit of edge on it, but waited brilliantly as he hops it into the end zone for the score. Thank you everyone for tuning in into our live stream. These games are available for free to be watched on the WFDF YouTube channel, uh, as well as on the Alti TV channel later on for the U17 categories. Please engage with us in the chat. Tell us where you're tuning in from. Tell, tell us who you're cheering for. Uh, we will be more than happy to pass these messages on throughout the stream. But please bear in mind that this is a junior championship and we do have moderators in the chat to make sure we keep it positive and respectful, encouraging our youth to enjoy when they go back and rewatch these epic games for them. Here is New Zealand receiving the poll for the first time. So disc is going to be brought into play here. Landed out so they get the chance to bring in from the brick mark here. It's just, just shy of a third of the way down the field. Again, vertical stack set up. Find a way to split that and get the cutter coming free towards the break side. Collins goes central where he finds Swinson. Swinson with a continuation to Walker. Uh, coming underneath there is Jack Lewis, but he is suspiciously free. Seems that he might have been picked. I think he's going to keep possession here, but it will give the defender chance to a chance to catch up. That's the 83 shirt of Maxime Ayad. Low disc towards the break side, looking for Collins. Tall figure, fakes. And there's a lot of traffic in the centre of the field as a layout is made, and Swinson's going to be called out of bounds here. Asking for a perspective from the sideline. And we see some players from Team Canada signaling that 
He was inbounds. It is Suzuki who is providing a perspective for his teammate. Immediately accepted. Play moves on. So Swinson, can he find a way to get the disc off this trap sideline? High stall pressure somehow makes it stick in the narrowest of windows. Faking again down the line. They're going to swing here into the center, give themselves a lot more space to work with on both sides of the pitch. Lewis goes wide. That seemed like an early pick call there. And they're telling him that the disc is going to go back into the hands of Jack Lewis. Lewis wants to go round. Seemed like he got caught in the fingers a little bit, but he gets away with it. And he has the disc back in his hands now. Handler charging up the line. They're going to take the opportunity to go for the break side flick. And a run through D. Excellent effort by the Canadians. I believe that was number 62, GR, with the defense for the Canadians. But previously, Ayad had called the travel call and uh, play had stopped for half the field and they're deciding that actually that probably did affect how the play shook out and then Lewis on the resumption goes into the end zone and finds Finn Collins and New Zealand tie us up at one apiece. Excellent patience from New Zealand in front of the end zone. We saw them swinging it a couple of times before they decided to take the last shot into the end zone. It was clear that they were primarily looking for the break side but eventually I believe the last throw was, yeah, for the open upline cut. He tried to get a defender there peeling off to help and clog that space, but didn't quite get there in time. So we are level on the scoreboard once more at one a piece. We were doing a little bit of uh, digging beforehand. The, this New Zealand side is called the Katipo, and I was, I was curious as to what that was. Uh, you might be able to see it on the shorts. Uh, it's a spider. It's uh, a kind of a venomous spider, New Zealand's only venomous animal apparently. Very dangerous. Mm -hmm. oh, a lot of a lot of countries go with the uh, go with the themes of uh, naming their teams after uh, native species. It is a nice tradition for sure. Gives you a little bit more leeway to work with when you're designing your national jerseys. Here is Canada. As well as that, it's a nice way to, to forge a team identity more than just being we are Team New Zealand, for example in the case of the Katipo. Something a little bit different defensively for the Kiwis here. Nathan Wu will be the steady offensive handler for Canada together with Suzuki. Yeah, you can see Suzuki's wearing that uh, face mask as well. Maybe hoping to eventually Ex exchange it for a, a black one, just like Cantor was wearing at World Games for Colombia. Yeah, it does have a little, uh, obviously you, you're not wearing it to psych out your opponent, but it does have a little <laughs> bit of menace. Canada staying very patient at the moment. We mentioned there is a slight wind here, but certainly these players are gonna have to deal with. Certainly it's more consistent than it was on the pitch behind us yesterday. For those wondering how we are orientated at the moment, we are, we're currently back on basically to the pitch you saw yesterday for the opening game. Canada incredibly deep in their own end zone. They tried to solve it with a hammer, but there was definitely contact on that catch, but nothing called. Well, uh, one of the one of the uh, Canada receivers, McCall, seemed, seemed, seemed to be okay, but I think it's Stonehouse here who's saying that he did get some contact as that hammer went up. A steepling shot that seemed to come down with snow on it. And you understand why, because they were really penned into their end zone and they needed to find some sort of pressure release valve. The call will be retracted. I thought McCall got a nice hand in the face there on the jump, but uh, nonetheless, he was fine with taking that hit. And here is Canada finding themselves on defense. Collins, who was strong in the air to get the turn. Now trying to anchor the D-line offense. Already scored the game's first point. This one he might get the little dish off here. In towards the end zone, no, fakes. Looks back towards the break side. This is very patient, clinical it seems, from New Zealand. Can they hold their shape and their form? Milne. Swinging to Collins. Again, this is patient dump swing offense. That one might be a little bit overthrown, but actually well adjusted and chased down by Milne. 
Milne looks towards the inside shot, doesn't see it. The Canadian defence has really forced New Zealand back here. I think these break side cuts maybe need to come a little bit earlier. And that time, seems like Stonehouse just had position on that one all the way and got a hand in there. He immediately strikes deep to pull about three defenders with him, but Canada chooses patience and they let the New Zealand defense set up yet again. So what can Canadians do at the second time of asking? Here is Wu going backwards to Suzuki. Yeah, the mask and the, and the dyed hair make Suzuki an uh, instantly recognizable figure. And he gets the disc back in his hands now. Again, this New Zealand zone, which caused Canada so many problems on the last possession, has again forced them back early on in the point. Gonna Saker on the far sideline. Trying to get a little bit of give go, move through this zone at pace and not give it a chance to really set up. That one's a little bit floaty and it can only be tipped round the corner by De Bru. This New Zealand zone really causing the Canadians problem, but I think we might have a foul call. I think that was a really good throw. See, recognize, uh, I think, yeah, Wu, sorry, Oyenart recognizing the opportunity that there is a hole in between the two defenders. And it seems like there might have been some kind of contact on the throw. The receiver definitely had a chance on that, I would say. But in any case, the players will have to discuss that in between themselves. No game advisors at this event, as they will need to take a break after the long season they have had with the World Ultimate Club Championship, as well as the World Games. The disc goes back as the foul is probably contested. It is, conte it is a, a contested foul. Thomas Oyenart brings the disc back into play. Goes around towards the break side to Suzuki. And the New Zealand zone gets the chance to get set up again. There's a cross field shot available if they want it, but actually they're just going to be a little bit more circumspect to try and swing it around the back. Guna Sekera gets a little jam through there to Stonehouse. He's got the mullet dyed red. It's a, it's a look, certainly. <laughs> the wind is now directly blowing directly into our faces, so towards the camera, actually. So what Canada don't want to happen is to get stuck on this near sideline. Yeah, where the disc is always pushing it out of play. Now, that's a nice push through the first uh, cup, but New Zealand recovers quickly. I like that you've got the Canadian players looking for these throw and go options more. They're trying to catch the force on their heels a little bit so they can find a way to get beyond them. A nice little scuba over the top might provide a release valve. De Bru looking into the end zone. Oh, this is going to float and sail. It's tipped and caught. McColl wise to the play. Collins got a hand up there well, but he didn't catch his D, and that's what can happen. And this is an exciting piece of action, exactly what we were kind of expecting. I don't think that D could have been caught. I think it was just the fingertips of uh, was uh, that Collins. Collins, yeah. Collins, who got up really high, could reach the disc, but only tips it with his fingers. And McCall ready to collect the garbage flying high in the air. So not a clean hold for Canada, but a hold nonetheless. Yeah, again, not how they would have drawn it up, but they all count the same. On serve so far in this game, New Zealand forced a turnover out of the Canadians, although they weren't able to make it stick. Games this week in all divisions played to 15 points with half-time at eight. In the under 20 divisions here in the World Junior Ultimate Championships, they are 100-minute games. Whereas in the under 17 division, so the European Youth Ultimate Championships, they are 80 minute games. Great pull all the way to the New Zealand end zone. They center it immediately. Yeah, you can hear the Canadian coaches on the sideline were happy with that as well. A couple of players in that same space. Spur is the player who comes through to make the catch. Wants to get the reset off. Douglas looking wide, finds Swinson. 
Swinson down the far sideline. Woodward looks and surveys the options. Again, they're trying to keep the disc moving relatively quickly, not get trapped in higher stalls. Collins towards the far sideline. We've seen already what a big player he can be for this New Zealand side as he dumps it off to Douglas. Douglas goes underneath there, still working it down that sideline at the moment, creating themselves enough separation to get the disc off and then slowly going back towards that side of the field. That one sits a little bit, not a problem though for Bryn Douglas. And Douglas uncorks the arm, he's looking to track it into the end zone, waited to perfection for Jack Lewis to make it to a piece. Jack Lewis set up that cut so well for the last score. It was a tight squeeze, but I think the forehand force allowed that sort of easier throw um, straight down the sideline. And that's a clean offensive halt for New Zealand. Lovely patient stuff that we've seen earlier and that's in front a, of the end zone. a really tricky shot when you're on the sideline. You're trying to find that pocket of space, so you want to get it out. You always want to get the disc out nice and early. You've got that little blading edge on it to keep it in bounds. But it's tricky because you don't give yourself a huge margin for error. You put that too far out in front, it's not going to come back in bounds, and you don't put it out up far in front enough. You're throwing it right into the teeth of the defence. So an expertly weighted throw there. A surprising choice by Canada to decide to force forehand, uh, maybe hoping for some of the wide backhand around throws that would be pushed down by the wind. But uh, we will see if they decide to try something else in the upcoming points. But first they will need to focus on O. We've got the, a similar O line to last time. Suzuki is there with his arm stretched up signaling the readiness to receive the pole. This one will land all the way in the end zone as well. Suzuki centers it. Again, New Zealand choosing to stick with this defense that seemed to cause Canada problems on their previous point. De Bruy sending the disc to the middle once more. There are some open options downfield, but maybe too dangerous to take. Yeah, it feels to me like the uh, the deeper players for Canada, they're not connected to the rest of the play. Sure, they're keeping that deep player occupied, but are you, are you ever really sure that they're going to get the disc? Is that one nice little seam over the top of the defense there to unleash some pressure? Again, it's about taking the looks when they're there. That one shot down the sideline. Oh, and Toned it's waited perfectly line. for Stonehouse. Collins is going to say that he wasn't able to tap those feet in time. I must admit, on this sideline, it's really tricky to get a good look at it. We are on the ground level here at Bola Marshova in Wroclaw. No elevation for the commentators, not really allowing us to properly see the far sideline. But they seem to be happy to call it in on the far sideline. Excellent. Quick discussion so far out of the U20 boys. Here is Oyenard looking for options. Goes up line to Suzuki. Suzuki all thought about going over the top and in the end it's just that little slash cut from Oyenard making the goal. And that'll be 3-2. The Canadians keeping it on serve in this contest. And that is a perfect combination of patience and daring shots from Canada. They did wonderful, not being worried at all about swinging the disc multiple times, trying to tire out the New Zealand defense, waiting for the good opportunity to open up. They do so, Stonehouse gets the huge gainer, and then two upline passes, and they make it all the way into the end zone. We're staying very close in this game of the U20 Open teams first game for the U20 Open category here in Wroclaw. Yeah, I think actually New Zealand won't be too unhappy with that necessarily because they forced that that deep shot and Collins is a really rangy athlete, so has the ability to close the gaps there. Wasn't quite able to do so in time on that occasion, but that throw to Stonehouse was so nearly out of play. So actually, maybe on reflection you say, we didn't get the turn, but we still, did a, we still think we did a good job. In case you're wondering about the streaming schedule for this week, we will only be streaming one field this week, but we were only going to be streaming four days, so you're actually lucky that we're streaming the whole week. Uh, and there will be different games uh, equally distributed among the different divisions. So 
Uh, don't be looking anywhere else besides the WFDF YouTube channel as well as the Alti TV YouTube channel. There will be five games stream each day and the schedule will be updated regularly. Here is New Zealand. Yeah, we're trying to make sure we get a good, a fair balance of divisions here and uh, trying to make sure that we can get uh, every country streamed here early in the week as a turnover in New Zealand's end zone will give Canada the shortest of short fields. First chance for a Canadian defense to show off. Miller brings it to the front of the end zone already. You can see he's trying to direct traffic. Cut towards the break side. The high release with the lefty works for the Canadians. Ayad is pumped. Ayad for the first break of the game for Canada. That was an easy break side throw to the front of the stack for Canada. And, and the Canadians are loud and rowdy. <laughs> but um, in fairness, Benji, those are all the U20 Open men's teams. <laughs> I, I, I don't think it's. I don't think it's restricted to the under 20s or towards the open division necessarily. Uh, on my on my way here yesterday, there's a there's a there's a wonderful tram network here in Wrocław, but uh, there was a tram that derailed near the complex, so that that uh, caused some travel problems yesterday, and uh, I ended up sharing a bus with a. Uh, with the French juniors who were not afraid to wear their heart on their sleeves. I'll put it that way. <laughs> Had a similar experience with the Italian contingent in the dining hall yesterday. <laughs> it's one of the things that's, that's, uh, that's nice about these, that's nice about youth tournaments especially, is that, that sense of patriotism and national pride. Is, it doesn't go overboard, but you can tell how excited the, uh, the players are to be out there representing their nation. There's perks to every category in Frisbee. I must admit, and this is partly because I'm well beyond this age now, I don't know if I'd have the energy to be doing that all week. <laughs> this ball soars out of bounds in the end, so New Zealand will get it from the brick mark. Hunter, the coach for Canada, is setting up immediately to talk from the sideline to the mark that will set up at the brick mark. Hunter, of course, making an appearance, I believe, at European Masters Championship with Hardfish, was it? I might well be right there. And Canada coming out in a zone of their own. We saw a three-person wall with one mark always chasing the disc. At the moment, New Zealand just going side to side rather than gaining any any forward ground. They're trying to force them towards this near sideline and the cheeky hammer over the top there from Swinson is a good way to go, get more space across the field. This one might soar and float a little bit and Canada would love that because the throw towards this near sideline, we did mention how the wind has the potential to pick it up and just push it away. So Canada with another short field here. They were ruthless with it on the previous point. Can they get another break here? Miller. With the upline cut, oh, so easy in the end. Galong just shook the defender out of his boots, powered upline, and New Zealand were powerless to stop them. It does help that Miller is a lefty. He really could have put, was able to put that quick laser forehand into the end zone, and that was a nice, easy upline cut for Canada. And those breaks are costing New Zealand a lot of their mental energy, I would say, because they look so easy and they really take just one pass. Great defensive decision to put up that zone that was forcing the handlers towards the sideline, making them take these, I wouldn't say dangerous, but sort of creative throws. We saw two overheads. They made it work upwind, but then the one that was going downwind was just pushed over the head or over the outstretched arm of the intended receiver and they lose the disc right in front of the end zone. Unfortunate for New Zealand, but in any case, they, you know, a break or two in these games doesn't mean anything yet. We saw that yesterday in the opening game, haven't we? Yeah, certainly, uh, especially when the sides are a bit more inexperienced, those come, there really is the potential for comebacks, but you called it earlier as well. Both of those breaks have come on the very first pass, converting them from the Canadians and that it is disheartening not only so you give the disc back and you get ready to you know try and mount a red zone stand and before you know it it's all over another big floaty pull this one is going to be caught by Douglas 
Not a surprise to see the Canadians go with the zone. They saw how well New Zealand's worked. And theirs was also fruitful on the last point. Seems like it will be a similar setup of a wall of three people with one mark. So technically a four-person cup almost. Again, they're looking for that big hammer over the top. This one's weighted much better. Douglas just stoops a little bit to make the catch, but they're going back into their own end zone to Swinson. When they're getting these swings, there's no continuation from them, and they're just going side to side. Now they might finally opening it up. That one is really well judged. Walker reels it in. A lovely look for that pass to Walker. And the opportunity comes from the Canadians to transition into going one on one. And that's going to create a pick downfield. Collins trying to come forward out of that set, but the defender not able to keep up. Louis yeah. Ying is the defender who retakes his position. Collins thought about the little pop off there to that handler coming through. Goes down the line instead. This is Josh Cooper. Two Coopers on this New Zealand side. Hugo Swinson. Oh, wow, what a block coming through from the far side. It's Ryan Louis Ying, who came out of nowhere to sneak in front of uh, Collins and get the D. That was an incredibly athletic play. I was just about to comment Swinson's handling skills, but that one was just stopped immediately by Canadian defense. They waste no time, put up a big one into the end zone, and that's a score. And that's double happiness for Ryan Louis Ying. He goes for the huge layout grab and pumped up. He strikes for the end zone for an yet another break for Canada. Well, they didn't get the short field this time, but they still seem they always want to score on the first pass. It was two all, and now, blinking, you'll miss it. Canada is 6 2 up, and not a surprise here to see that New Zealand have called the timeout. The teams have two timeouts available per half. We've seen quite a lot used, um, quite a lot of them used in the opening game yesterday. Some of them well, some of them helped the team, some of them didn't. But we will see if this one can make a difference in the New Zealand's approach. The Canadian zone causing them a little bit of trouble. They were able to get through it for the sec on the second try, but then once Canada transitioned to match D. They, it just it was clear that they were just waiting for the one opportunity where they could get the layout D, and they did. Yeah, the two teams seemed really equally matched in the first first few points of this game. New Zealand even had the disc to take the lead and get the game's first break. But Canada earned the disc back, and since then, they have been rocking and rolling. So I have spoken to some of the Canadian coaching staff before the game. They were telling me that some of these boys have been participating in the AUDL, the likes of Stonehouse, I believe, as well as some other ones. But apparently we're not meant to um, talk about it too much. I'm not sure if it's about whether they're proud of that experience or whether they don't want to be defined as the AUDL players. Let us know in the comments if you know more about that. And if you have that experience, of course, there will be an adjustment here because you're playing on the regulation size field rather than the great open expanses. Uh, back to self-refereeing. It is a different sport, isn't it? It, it? it almost does feel like watching a different sport at times. And I must admit that, uh, call me old fashioned, but I, I prefer it this way. <laughs> well, just like I like to say that women's ultimate is very different and uh, mixed is a completely different sport as well. It's just everything has its different aspects and some of them are fun, some of them are less fun. Nonetheless, it's a sport with a flying disc. We love to see it move through the air, especially on days like this when it's sunny, only slightly windy, not too hot. It's, it, I'd call this a thrower's wind, the sort of wind where you know, everyone should be able to complete, you know, a good majority of passes. But making those really difficult, tough throws, that shows your quality with the disc in hand. First pass comes to Lewis here. It's been a, such a key cog for the New Zealand offense. 
into the end zone. Douglas under a little bit of pressure. High release valve. Lewis can't make it stick. And then that wind is really picking up now, blowing into our faces. So that disc was just taken by it yet again. Nothing that the receiver could have done about it. Oyana picks up on the sideline. Suzuki tries to squirrel his way free. High release into the end zone. Stuck in there for Debru. Canada up 7-2 now. They really make it a one-throw story, this uh, Canadian defense. These breaks, the last three breaks, have really been just one pass straight into the end zone. Last four breaks. Last four breaks, actually. And uh, New Zealand did everything they could to prevent it. They set up a straight mark, trying to prevent that quick pass into the end zone. But um, they managed to somehow break the mark anyway. And with this win, those high releases are never as easy as they seem. So Canada currently one point away from taking the first half of this first U-20 men's game. Yeah, New Zealand look at the little, they've got their heads down a little bit, but they need to stay engaged, stay energized, because we've seen that they can generate turns from the Canadians if they can only find a way to start a point on defense. I kind of agree with that, yeah. I think once they get over the frustration with the O points, we saw that yesterday in the opening games, the Polish girls uh, got about four breaks on them, but once they were able to manage to bring the disc into the end zone, their D-line really stepped up and was able basically to do the same to, yeah, to their th British opponents if straight you think, away. If you think a five-point margin is too big, well, I would like to remind you that uh, Poland were down 11-5 yesterday and brought it all the way back to 11 all. That's a six-point gap. Quick maths. So New Zealand again having to work in the shadow of their own end zone. Jack Lewis trying to find a way to get players free downfield. I think they want to be a bit more aggressive with some of these passes because they're running out of space to use. Right in that back coffin corner now is Jack Lewis. How long until New Zealand decide to bang their way out of it? And that was almost a Callahan. It will be called ripped out of the hands of the intended receiver. So the disc is going to stay with New Zealand. But you're seeing there how close the Canadians are coming. This one's floated over the top. Oh, fast hands there. Stevenson with a huge grab. Ripped away. Here's the deep shot. It's going to float. It's going to hang. Canada was able to uh, bring it down, but I think there's going to be a call here. Oh, Ellington yeah. uh, and uh, Gallon for, for Canada, I think. They collided. They definitely collided. Uh, I think the Canadian defender took off early for that deep shot, then sort of slowed down when he saw Ellington uh, do the same. But then Ellington had the height advantage, I would say, and started tracking the disc once more, kept his eyes locked, and the disc actually slowed down and uh, I think Ellington was hoping for that later sky, but as he was taking off to get to where the disc was floating, he hit uh, Galan basically straight in the face. They collided and yeah. that could have prevented. I understand this call. It's very difficult to say whether he would have been able to get to the disc on time. You might um, try to rewind your, your video and see for yourself. But certainly I think there's th but the argument that he, he would have had a chance to bring it down is fair. And they are going to call this an uncontested foul. And Ellington will get the disc. So as we've seen, not just in this game, but yesterday as well, tournament being played with good spirit. Some of these players needing to move back as they've continued to run downfield. Ellington wants to reset the disc backwards. He finds that option in Hugo Swinson. Swinson towards this near side for Douglas. Thinks about squeezing that up line, doesn't like it. Oh, what a cut, defender sold so far down the river. They can't quite take advantage though. They're gonna have to play towards the far sideline where the skyscraping figure of Finn Collins finally stops the bleeding for New Zealand back on the board at 7-3. And that is some sexy footwork out of Lewis. I think he will love to re-watch that. He just moved his feet one way 
didn't really turn his hip, just used his feet to change the direction, to co confuse his defender completely, went for that upline cut, and then saw the opportunity in the break side, put up that high blade for his receiver. And that's a score for New Zealand, an important hold to stay in this first half. And now the New Zealand defense will get a chance to show off here on the stream. I mean, he created so much separation there that it felt like he was on the North Island and the defender was on the South Island. That's, that's what it was like, a textbook example of how to get free is that reset cut. Even when you know that they're going to try and attack that upline space, sometimes you still get suckered in. Canada here looking to hold to take half 8-3. And here is the Canadian O-line. We haven't seen them on the field for a while. Suzuki. Goes back to Oyana. They keep moving the disc sideways. Big swings, lots of poaches downfield from New Zealand, preventing any undercuts. Suzuki has the disc again, goes sideways to Wu. Yeah, they find a nice little gain of downfield to Kristin. And that time, there's no connection on that reset. This might be a foul call, perhaps. We see Nicholson stopping to come back for the discussion with Kristen. And it seems like Kristen will keep the disc. Yeah, not sure whether, I didn't see whether this is contested or just an accepted foul, but disc stays with the Canadians, wanting to swing it across again. Both sides have struggled maybe to get rhythm and momentum downfield against these zone defenses, floated up and ripped down for the Can for the New Zealand Callahan Cooper! by Josh Cooper. Woo! <laughs> what a play by Josh Cooper. And I think that might be everything that New Zealand hoped for in this defensive point. We saw them work hard uh, on the matchup D, on the handlers, and then uh, poaching downfield. And it pays off. We saw the frustration out of Canada uh, stuck deep in their own end zone quite for some time. And then the sort of, I wouldn't say lazy, but let's say casual backhand pass sideways to the seemingly open handler. But nope, New Zealand says not just yet. Here's a first break for New Zealand yeah. as they score it in a big fashion. Cooper really picked his moment and picked the pocket of the Canadians. What a time and what a way to get your first break on the board with the Callahan. Just seeing in front of me, there's one of the Italian coaches doing a little bit of scouting. Ooh. So uh, interesting to see if uh, when the Italians play either of these sides, what, uh, what they've taken from this game to bring into that one. Just again, it goes to show how uh, not just the players on field, but the, uh, the whole coaching staff here has developed so much where you've got active scouting going on around the field site, making sure that you've got every possible advantage as the pool lands out of bounds and Kochi Suzuki will bring it in from the brick. Now that would have been a lovely floaty pull, but um, they still need to aim it a bit more to the right if they want it to land inbounds. Yeah, the way these pulls have been fading, I'd be tempted to pull it right from that far side of the end zone. We have Oyanart and Suzuki finding a way through the wall of the New Zealand defenders. The static handlers haven't been very useful for them, so it's nice to have to see the four players actually moving around, doing lots of upline cutting, looking for options. That was great back, big pivots from Suzuki. Oyanart now on the far sideline. Lots of movement from the handlers, I think. Yeah, you can see what a job the two Nicholsons, Sean and Daniel, are doing on the mark. They've got these, you know, these big bodies, and uh, with Hodson as well, they're really making it difficult to, to get those downfield passes, and they're forcing everything laterally. Canada have gone all the way back into their own end zone after starting the possession at the brick mark. Nathan uh, Wu with a huge break down the sideline. Suzuki now with a gainer, puts up a huge backhand. Will that one be too long? 
two players underneath. It sails off the hands of both of them. And that's a turnover for Canada. Yeah, I think that time they finally got a got an opportunity to get a handler looking downfield, seeing the one-on-one -on -one matchups, getting it in the power position. So I like the idea, just couldn't get it to work. So the mullets will get a chance to redeem their hairstyles with the with the uh, you're, not, you're not a fan of the mullet rachel we have seen them uh in the masters category um yeah still not a fan not even the youthful uh wrinkle-free faces can can justify that haircut i'm sorry <laughs> wow big bid bid. flying through and didn't get there stonehouse gets back to his feet Seemed like he did a relatively good job of avoiding contact as well. Hammer over the top. Hudson, oh, bubbled it, but really good focus and concentration there. Nicholson underneath. Hayes pops it off. Milne. Wanted the little dish pass, doesn't see it. Cooper clears through. That's a lovely high release to find that space, get it out in front, faking the backhand. Swinging it across the field. Nice catch under pressure there by Noah Hayes. Hayes into the end zone, no! Suzuki was there! And tried for the greatest. I don't know whether he was in bounds when he took off, but uh, I love the effort, even if it didn't work. That was some really intense defense by the Canadians and equally intense offense by New Zealand. The players really grinding it out on the field. Just the scoring pass, it, I don't think it was open. I mean, obviously it wasn't because Suzuki was right there, but I'm surprised given that they've uh, seemed to be very patient this game, that New Zealand went for that look. Canada with a second chance to take the half. Suzuki, forced to go backwards. Everything's very cramped and congested. Scuba over the top, lands in the hands of Gunasekara. De Bru, still going backwards. Now a nice gainer to the far sideline. Suzuki doesn't get the continuation. Still think I'd like to see the disc move a little quicker here. Oh, and this is a great shot to Stonehouse. Deliciously carving through the front line of that New Zealand defense. I'm surprised Suzuki didn't try some give and go action with Stonehouse. Maybe he doesn't like his mullet either. Uh, this looks like a down call from the players. Yeah, the discussion's going to be whether or not. Nathan Wu was able to get his hands underneath. It's tricky to see, isn't it? I never have a good perspective. I trust the players to do their best. The spirit has been excellent in this game so far. I mean, I think I think that's the whole point of spirit of the game is that you have to trust that your opponent is making their calls in good faith. Otherwise, the uh, otherwise the system breaks down. Several players gathering to offer their perspectives. The easy part is that when you can decide that the disc will just go back, we have a rule for that. So. Wu seems convinced that he got his hand underneath. I think they are just going to send this back to uh, Oyanar. And in the end, deciding it's just too close to call. It's a call from the Canadian sideline came, let's play some ball. I don't have the heart to tell them that it's a disc and not a ball, but <laughs> we'll, let, we'll let it slide. Although, to be fair, we're guilty of it as well. How often have we referred to teams playing small ball offense? Yeah, I, I was just thinking about that we have to stop talking about it like that. A short disc or something. We're, we'll come up with something fun throughout the course of this tournament. No, nah, it's too late. It's in the ultimate lexicon now. we just got to accept <laughs> it. Here's Suzuki. Goes sideways to Wu. Wu goes for the hammer. Oh, this is going to float. It's going to helix a little bit. Brought down under pressure. Leishman tried to get close. Couldn't get close enough. That Tough was going to save her with the catch. That was just an incredible grab. I think there was contact on the catch, but he still managed to just keep the uh, disc on his belly. Yeah, pick himself up. Get the hat back on as well. 
Oynard. Wow, cheeky little throw, finding that seam through to Suzuki. Looks like he's taken that mask off. I don't blame him. The sweat must be so uncomfortable underneath. The disc still in the hands of Canadians. Again, I'd like to see, I'd like to see a bit more urgency about this handler movement, getting these give goes and these little pop offs, finally getting it through and getting some motion going downfield. New Good. Zealand zone looks to get set again. Good positioning from McCall, getting that big gainer. They're now in the last third of the end zone. They fake the hammer once more. And they've, we've seen them put it up, so it's a fake you have to respect as it goes up again. And once more, Canada are able to bring it down to Woo. get their, uh, get the goal to bring them into half. Woo with the assist. I believe it might have been goodness sake, uh, with the score. But Canada finally reel it in to take the half. You called it right. It does, it look, does look to be Tyler Gunasekera with the catch and those overheads. A little bit of creativity and, uh, yeah, Canadians cutting loose a little bit and it pays dividends there as they take the first half 8-4. Thank you everyone so much for engaging. It seems like we have a lot of friends and family engaging in the chat, both from New Zealand and Canada. We have about uh, seven minutes, I believe, uh, to take a break, uh, enjoy some refreshments, and we will see you on the other side. A group of ultimate players, coaches and video enthusiasts. We've worked with the major federations and the greatest events. We're on a mission to make Ultimate huge. We want our videos and live streams to be free to watch. We want to make stories that not only reach you, but also reach people outside the Ultimate community. Like and subscribe, Ultimate TV, the best in the world. Become a member and fund, fund our, our work, work to cover more events in the future and to bring more stories and live coverage to the eyes of the Ultimate world and, and beyond. beyond.
right now. He's gonna have to bid. Oh, just a, oh, just a f <laughs> football. Huge layout block. Unbelievable stuff on the front corner of the end zone. Maybe well. just that boost of energy they needed. Welcome back to the Joint Juniors Ultimate Championships, live from Wrocław, Poland. This is World Juniors Action Under-20 Open Division, Canada against New Zealand, with the Canadian sitting pretty going into the second half with an 8-4 lead. My name is Benji Reese. It's a pleasure to be back with you, joined by Rachel Tosnerova. Hello, Benji. Pleasure to be here with you as well. The first half saw a couple of points the teams going back to back it seemed like it was going to be a very even game. Then t Canada really took off with a difficult zone, co co causing New Zealand to turn very close to their own end zone and then scoring basically one pass breaks four times in a row. Then eventually New Zealand able to come back with some clever combinations of patient handler work and cheeky downfield gainers but nonetheless canada took the half 8-4 and here's new zealand starting on offense this second half hello to the over 400 of you watching on the world flying disc federation youtube channel as that disc across the end zone is knocked away from canada and they're going to look to break in their traditional style here on the very first pass all their breaks have come with their first time with the disc and going up line, what a grab by the Canadians. I thought that Miller had overthrown it, but how wrong I was. Dex Miller repeats the action from the first half with that lefty laser forehand into the end zone. And Canada start the first, the second half of this game with a break, going up 9-4 over New Zealand. Here's the replay of it. Let's Huge layout bid. That is unreal stuff from the Canadians. And it looks like that half time, which so often can kind of take the wind out of your sails, has done anything but for Canada. We are 54th minute of this game in yeah. the 54th minute. <laughs> yeah, games played to. 15 all week here in all the divisions, but there is a little difference in timing depending on whether we're in under 17s or under 20s. Under 17 games are 80 minutes before the cap comes on, and it's 100 minutes here in the under 20 divisions. So full length games, as we're seeing again on the replay, or not quite. The replay machine refusing to cooperate. <laughs> That happens sometimes. In any case, what is cooperating this week so far is the weather. If, in case you are tuning in just now, the conditions are practically perfect all, all, uh, for Ultimate, as often um, is the case here in Wroclaw. We are so lucky to have a venue like this available for different tournaments, be it the world or European formats. I tell you what, actually, I think this is the fourth time I've been here. And I don't think it's rained a single day. Exactly. Perfect weather, perfect pitches, great organization, despite the short-term notice that they have had. And this one floating into the end zone. Not a problem for Douglas to reel it in, but you're seeing that the Canadians are really forcing New Zealand back. This one has shot down the sideline. Not a problem there for Sean Nicholson. Call from the Canadian sideline is to transition into match defense. Spur, goes back to Lewis. Vicatipo, those venomous spiders. 
the new nickname of this New Zealand side. Nicholson comes underneath, or loses his footing ever so slightly, but does get the reset off to Swinson with that backwards hat. Spur on the sideline, trying to trap them. Create a little bit of separation. Swinson gets around, gets that reset off. Going back to Douglas, I think there's a stoppage downfield. It's going to be a pick, but the player's going to be able to catch up. The Canadian sideline being lovely and considerate. Giving us space to watch the throw into the end zone, finds the target. Luke Spur gained a lot of yardage at that point, and he's the scoring option as well. New Zealand pegging Canada back slightly to make it 9-5. McKee attacks the back of the end zone for the score. We'll see it one more time on this replay. That was a great put right on the money. Two players actually getting into that far end of the zone. And that was a lovely piece of offense by New Zealand, making sure they stay in this game and give another chance to their D-line to prove themselves. Nicholson, really impressive downfield. Swins Swinson? Swinston? <laughs> Uh, Swinson, uh, I am very impressed with, with the handling he's been doing for this New Zealand team. So the Canadian offense getting ready to receive here. Seen a, seen a lot of these pools drift towards this sideline and out of bounds and New Zealand trying to compensate by pulling from the far side of the field. This one angled, skims across the turf, fielded and Leonard throws to Suzuki with the New Zealanders coming back in zone. Debreu back to Leonard all the way to the sideline. You can, it feels like the Canadians were told during that halftime break that play with more pace and urgency against this zone. Really keep the Kiwis tracking back and forth. That one is a spicy, spicy blade and uh, backpedaling and in the end falling over backwards to make the catch is Oyanar. Debru putting that up really high. Yeah, probably didn't come off quite as he would have hoped, but the receiver read it well. And then Oyanar has it again on the far side. Yeah, all the props to him. Doesn't matter if you have to fall to catch that laser th throw. He has it again on the far sideline now, examining the options downfield. He decides for the backhand ripper into the end zone. He's got the receiver underneath and it's collected. Stonehouse, not in yet, has to go back. Suzuki now centers the disc, jumps it in, and that's a score for Canada. The Canadians just maybe got a little bit bored with playing it around the back. Oyanar's still Stonehouse deep, and uh, when you can rip it out of the sky like that, it's an option that I understand taking. 10-5 to the Canadians now. Not out, of, not out of reach, certainly, for New Zealand. I need I remind you that yesterday, Poland were 11-5 down, and they brought it all the way back to 11-all in our showcase opener. Agreed. So as the team prepare for the next point under the watchful eyes, of a scouting Italian coach. Uh, you might be interested to know that the U20 Open Division is currently being played out in Pool A and Pool B. This game uh, being from the Pool B that also features Italy, Belgium, the Czech Republic and Poland. Yeah, there are two pools of six here uh, in the initial phase. The top two teams from each pool go into the top power pool when you carry the result forward. Uh, the middle two teams go into a middle power pool and the bottom teams go into a bottom power pool. And then the bottom two teams, the top two teams in, uh, in the top power pool go straight to semi-finals. Whereas uh, the bottom two teams in that first pool play the top two teams from the middle pool for a chance to make it to the semis. New Zealand is back on O facing that dangerous Canadian four cup. Cheeky little hammer over the top there to Ellington. Collins fakes big but decides for the hammer. Yeah, attacking it over the top has forced the Canadians to transition here. 
Sam Cooper goes backwards into the hands now of Swinson. Swinson to Ellington. He's got a long reach. Just takes a simple reset to Swinson, who gets it out of his hands quickly. Coming underneath from the backside out of nowhere is Martin Gallon. Just Josh Cooper, I don't think, had any idea how Gallon, how close Gallon was. And you have to credit the fact that he got that block clean as a whistle. And it is these sneaky defensive plays from the Canadians that have been creating these points for them and this time New Zealand says not just yet two defenders prevent that last pass into the end zone I think this is the first time that New Zealand have been able to get the disc back actually and good for them over. good for them they will have to keep doing that in the second half if they want to put up a good fight still so a second chance for New Zealand I've seen as well that the uh, New Zealanders they've got on brand Katipo socks as well just uh, yeah, bringing that uh, outfit coordination to the next level. Love to see it. Collins, again, just nonchalantly flicks that hammer over the top without a care in the world, it seems. Doesn't matter that it's your opening game at Worlds. Collins thinks about the hammer again. Not this time. Wants to blade. This is going to flow. Awkward catch to reel in at the back of the end zone. I don't think Swinson was in bounds. So Canada will get it on the end zone line. That is unfortunate for New Zealand. Swinson really have to focus all his energy on getting the disc in his hands, unable to actually check his feet at the same time. No one can blame him for that one, but here is Miller, the lefty killer. With that long reach, able to get round the mark if need be. And Miller brings it in. Low, this is going to require... Wow, some fast footwork. I'm not sure whether uh, Ayal was in the end zone, but good spirit there from the Kiwis to call it in, and it's 11-5 to Canada. And now New Zealand finding themselves in quite a difficult position to stay mentally in this game. A six-point difference this late in the game might be very difficult, but we've, we've seen it happen, Benji. We're, we're going to give them the benefit of the doubt and hope that the New Zealand fans engaging with us in the chat can push their team to make this game more equal. And yeah, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Uh, oh, by the way, thank you everyone in chat who's calling me up on my uh, Maori pronunciation. Uh, Kartipo, I pronounce, I, I'm told, so kind of making that first, that first vowel sound a bit longer. Uh, apologies, everyone. In any case, if you want to follow the schedule, if you want to follow the live score, so do um, visit the JJUC.sport website. If you scroll all the way down, we've had some people struggling to find the schedule. It says uh, mobile and right below that it says life scores. If you hit that button, you'll be able to follow all the games live and there's also the upcoming schedule. Yeah, we're streaming from Field 1 uh, all this week now. So five games a day up until finals day on Saturday when there's just, of course, the, uh, the three games as well. Uh, all the WJUC games, the under 20 divisions, being streamed here live on the World Flying Disc Federation YouTube channel with the under 17 EYUC games being streamed on Ulti TV's YouTube channel. So if you give those both a subscription, you won't miss any of the action from Wrocław this week. Collins on the far sideline with those gloved hands, all tipped and stealing through. Canada again was so alert to get the opportunity. McKibben gets the block and he has the disc in his hands now, looking at the end zone, doesn't like what he sees. Just going to take the reset off to Richard Ma. They waste absolutely no time, but at the same time, keep the patience working the handlers. Here they get a beautiful ga gainer and one quick pass for the hands of Davis Toth in the end zone yet another break for canada they go up 12th over the kiwis 
You can see what the plan is there from Canada. They're getting a lot of space set up for the handlers to work. Those gift goes, they're trying to get those they're trying to get the handler, getting the disc off and then immediately powering up line. What happens as a result is that the force comes off a little bit there, cheats a little bit into that open side, and that opens up the brake side space to get it all the way around into the end zone. Really smart play there from the Canadians as they take a 12-5 lead. And a uh, timeout here called on the field. Just uh, for those of you who are uh, only just tuned in, uh, there's a hard point cap at 15. Uh, the time limits are different depending on the divisions. All the under-17 games, soft cap comes on at 80 minutes, at which point you finish the point, add one to the highest score, and that becomes your new score cap. For the uh, under-20 divisions, uh, it's uh, full-length 100-minute games, so getting the opportunity to you know, really test your metal there in the full you know, kind of senior-length contests. So as the teams huddle up, we're going to take a short break here in the commentary booth and we will see if the Kiwis can make the desired comeback after the timeout. Welcome back to Wrocław for the Joint Juniors Ultimate Championships. World Juniors action here in the under 20 Open Division. Canada seem to have really hit their stride here, up 12-5 over New Zealand. Both teams having lots of sideline support from other divisions, from their nation. Big coaching uh, and admin groups as well for both sides. Great to see lots of parents and uh, other volunteers getting involved with the youth programs, allowing these athletes to really just focus on the competition. Here is a pull all the way to the back of the end zone collected by New Zealand. And you can see that they want to get the disc moving quickly. Collins dumps off. Swinson. They see what the plan is there. Get Collins isolated in space. And he's jacked it into the end zone. Really well defended by Ryan Louis Ying. Canada moves the other way. Here is McKibben. He puts up a big one for the end zone. Wide open GR collects it in a clap catch. And that's another break for Canada. They go up 13-5 and they make it look really easy. Yeah, you see what New Zealand's plan was there coming out on offense. They had Collins isolated pretty much on his own in the center of the field, gave him so much space to work with. He got the disc in his hands, looking downfield, just maybe got too much air underneath the deep shot. Canada knocked it down, and then rather than take their time setting up, they were off to the races quickly. You see, he's got time to really step into that throw, but there's two receivers and two defenders there. Louis Ying, rather than you know kind of celebrate immediately gets on it picks it up and before you know it canada in the end zone jeremy Jia was so open deep 13-5 canada two points away from victory new zealand really doing a good job here's here's the replay actually of that big put huge forehand and uh, you know it's good when your teammate celebrates before it's even been <laughs> caught. Uh, Louis Ying would have looked like a, a must, a little bit of a numpty if uh, if they hadn't caught, if the disc wasn't caught in the end. But fortunately for him, Jia more than spared his blushes. 
Yeah, like you said, Benji, I think New Zealand was going doing a really good job at the start of the point with the leading passes and isolation, uh, making space for a player in the middle of the field. It worked out well, except for that last pass. Let's see what they come up with for this next point. It's that same principle again. Seems like they've got Collins isolated in space in the center of the field. Back when I started playing, they used to call this uh, a German-style offense. This one swung a long way around. Really good chase down. Collins has the disc, but he has to go backwards because everyone downfield is so far away. And again, it is that offense where it's clear that the option is, is just give Collins space to work. Now they come out of it going down the far side line to Nicholson, who swings. Milne. Back into the hands of Hugo Swinston. We really see Collins focusing. Oh, a great grab, great save by New Zealand. They get the disc back, they keep it alive, but uh, a foul call will stop the play. Also, I I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I was just about to say that Collins was really making sure he waits for the right opportunity to make that nice in-cut for the, for the handlers. And now we see Team Canada gathering in front of our um, screen that we provided for the players where they can watch the replays. I've, I, I don't know how Lewis made that catch off the tip. I, I genuinely do not know. Unreal. But uh, yeah, as you see, there is the call here. Saw the signal for an accepted foul. So the disc will go back, but will remain with Collins. Uh, oh, yep, foul accepted. So evidently contact from Ayad there coming through the back of uh, Collins, it seems. Nice little strike up up line. They clear out that space well for Swinson. Swinson to Nicholson again. Canadians throwing themselves out with, I was going to say reckless abandon, not quite reckless. Another incredibly athletic big by Canada. Brings the turnover they wanted. Ayad puts up a huge forehand for the end zone. Defense unable to get there. Canada just shy of the end zone. Do they get the last pass? Yes, they do. That is Galan with the assist. And Liam Dagler with the score. 14-5. The Canadians one point away from victory. And the tying the shoelace celebration. Not one I admit that I've seen before. Here's the, uh, here's the turnover. I thought for all the world that, uh, that Milne had that. But evidently, disc wasn't quite in there. And here's the deep shot. I think it's actually... Uh, Baird, who, uh, who puts this one deep. And Baird, having made that connection with Galant, they get the one-on-one -on -one in the end zone, and Galant then just follows through with it, finds a Dejla, and that'll make it 14-5. Incredibly athletic play once again. This time it was Adam Leonard who, uh, who was there with the D, with that huge athletic bid. It's kind of been the story of this game. New Zealand really working hard and working well, uh, patiently with the disc, looking for good options to, um, to open up. And then there is the Canadian defender that really, you think there's almost no chance that they will get there, but they just tip the disc uh, in that huge athletic grab, I mean, uh, layout, that, um, yeah, it's, it's just, um, last second and it's it's been so effective then they waste no time immediately strike deep and here they are first yeah. potential game point it was 8-4 at half Canada winning this second period 6-1 as that one is tipped in the air went for that huck but it was too flat through the crowded center of the pitch Canada with a chance to take this game home on the far sideline. Tomlinson with the up line, cut to Richard Ma. Doesn't quite find it. They sent her back to Tomlinson. Tomlinson Maybe. for the open side, quick forehand into the end zone, and it will be Max Petanuzo with the last score for Canada. They take this first open under 20 match, 
15-5 over New Zealand. And that was clinical from the Canadians. Maybe started a little bit slowly, struggling to figure out the New Zealand zone, but when they got on, when they felt like they got a little bit of uh, fluency against it, and they were able to get the brake train rolling on defense, and uh, yeah, on this occasion, New Zealand, it seems, didn't have any answer for them, and 15-5 is the final score here, as you mentioned, in the under-20 Open division. Still four more pool games for both these sides, so uh, yeah, plenty of time for New Zealand to right the ship. It was an excellent game to watch. I'm sure the fans back at home are completely satisfied uh, with the performance both of these teams have put up because we've seen it all. We've seen highlights, we've seen big skies, we've seen defensive plays, we've seen lots of effort put into uh, this U20 game. Excellent spirit, quick, quickly resolved discussions, amicable solution of calls. Now we see the teams high-fiving as they prepare for their Post game spirit circle or rather spirit lines it might be we will we are about to see if you are eager to watch some u17 actions we have the 11 o'clock slot so the upcoming game in the u20 mixed oh uh, never yeah mind. under 17 <laughs> action is later today we That's do right. go to our <laughs> under 20 mix as you mentioned next game out we have switzerland Unless it's Israel currently next on the dock. But as you mentioned, we switched to the under 17s this afternoon. We've got under 17 women's action at 1 o'clock, Italy versus Belgium. At 3 o'clock local time, under 17 mixed with Belgium against Austria. And at 5 o'clock local time, the result of the Ulti TV Patreon vote is France versus Germany in the under 17 open division, which will mean that at the end of today, we'll have streamed a game from every division here, which is a uh, yeah. Nice little bit of scheduling as well. If you want to get involved and uh, have the chance to vote on potential future streamed games, you can do that on Ulti TV's Patreon, which is patreon.com slash Ulti TV. And allow us to continue to bring the best of the action here from Wrocław for the Joint Juniors Ultimate Championship. Don't go anywhere because JJUC continues on the other side. Right now, he's gonna have to bid. Oh, just a, oh, just a football. <laughs> Huge layout block. Unbelievable stuff on the front corner of the end. Zone. Maybe well. just that boost of energy they needed. that
TV. Alti.tv.